Welcome to Lisa's Painting Parties. I am Lisa, and uh, we are here again on Wednesday. Um, and uh, we'll be doing our weekly live painting party. So this week, the winner, by such a narrow margin, I think there was four votes in total that uh, declared this the winner, um, was this one, Seaside Sailing. Really, really, really pretty painting that I found on my journeys through Google Photo or Pinterest or a source of such. <laughs> and I loved it and I really want to try to recreate it. So I'm so glad that you guys picked this. This week, actually all three options I, what I'm in love with. Like I love uh, all of them. The celebration for us with all the fireworks and just the vibe of it was so fun and happy. And honestly, that was pretty close too. It was a very tight race. And the one that got second place was the Calm Island one. So if you look back at some of the options that uh, I posted from um, Saturday, that one was like basically like water and land and like air, and then there was like a, an island and a bunch of trees, and it just looked very like magical and, and pretty cool. So that was that was the second place, and uh, we almost won. But this is the one we're gonna do today. Lots, lots, lots of color. So I'm really excited to do this with you, and I'll talk through my process of how I'm gonna approach doing this. So for anyone who hasn't joined me before, um, so the way what I do is every week I put three options up for everyone to vote on. Um, these options are things that I find online, so I've never painted them before. I just find them really inspiring and I want to create my own version of them. And so everyone votes uh, what they like best and then that well, the winner is announced on the Tuesday and then on the Wednesday is what we paint. Um, and so I approach it based on um, how I would go about recreating it. Um, my way does not mean it's the right way. You might have another total different approach to do it. And I completely encourage you to add in your comments if you have other ways of um, doing this or if you're putting your own spin on it or if you want to change things up, like let us know. Um, and I just want, it's great to have a collaborative experience. There's been some really great comments that people have added before. But I will basically walk through how um, I would go about recreating this. And the whole intention of this really is just to get me to be a bit more creative because I'm not very creative when it comes up to like thinking of my own ideas to paint but I love to paint um, and I get so inspired by seeing beautiful images um, and I want you to feel the same way so this is just to show how easy it is to be able to find anything you like and you can do it um, all the supplies I use are uh, very inexpensive I get my all my paints and all my supplies from the dollar store my canvases usually come from like Amazon um, and I usually try to get like a, a cheaper option. So this is the one here. I saw Mary and you asked what we're painting today. So this is the one here you go. I'm glad you're joining. Hi, Jody. I'm so happy that you're here too. It's fantastic to see familiar names pop up. It's so great. Um, so we're going to do this one. It's really nice and I will have it available on the side. If you don't um, have this, like you might want to go back to the... Um, post from yesterday and just grab it as like a just download it as like a screenshot or just um, download the image just so you have it available for your own reference in case it's not as convenient for you to uh to see it from where it's at once we start so um and i'll walk through what that how i'm going to approach that shortly and yeah and we've been yeah so i've been doing this for about a year now so if you like this process and you want to check out more videos there's uh, I put them all up on my YouTube channel Lisa's painting parties and they're all also on this Facebook page on the videos tab so you can go back and watch and uh, enjoy and if you end up doing any of them I love to see them even if you've done one of the uh, parties from like last year or whatever like definitely still um, share in the comments because it does alert me when there's new comments on paintings or you can send it to me and let me take a look at your creation because I'd love to see what you guys have done because there's so many creative people out there Cool, so we'll get started in just a few more minutes. I'll go through what my supplies are. Hi, Ashley, I'm glad you're here. That's so fantastic. Yeah, and feel free to say hi. Um, if you haven't joined before, again, feel free to say hi. It's always nice to um, meet, virtually meet you. Um, so yeah, so in terms of the supplies, um, I have a canvas board. This one, these ones, the ones currently have been from Desairs. So they're just like an 11 by 14 canvas board. Um, and this is just what I use. You can use whatever you want. I like these more for storage, um, since I like to keep all my paintings, and I don't have a big house to store tons of actual bigger sizes than that. Um, <laughs> and then I have my um, my paints. 
And the paints that I suggest, if you have at least the primary colors, so blue, red, and yellow, and if you have black and you have white, then we can make any colors from that. If you have other colors too, from the dollar store the, here in um, where I'm from, it's about like a dollar each sometimes, so they're not very expensive. Um, so it's not so bad to get some other colors if you want to. But if you um, if you just have the basic primary and the black and white, you're good to go. The thing about using um, dollar store supplies, just to keep in mind, is that they already kind of change the pigment. So for example, I'm using this tropical blue today, and this tropical blue is already clearly like a blue that's been mixed with some white, like it's definitely like way brighter than like this Copenhagen blue that I had. And I only grabbed the tropical blue because my Copenhagen blue is running low, and this Copenhagen blue is like way darker. So that's the only thing is that you, from the dollar store, it's hard to get like a true blue or a true red. Um, at the same time, I kind of like that, like, we can still have fun with it. We can still make it work. So um, just keep that in mind because when you mix colors, sometimes it might be a bit funkier. Um, that would be my only suggestion there. Um, besides that, I have some water containers because we're going to need that sometimes, uh, particularly to clean our brushes. I have my paint palette. I have paper towel. And I also have, I suggest having at least three brushes. Um, it's not, again, not fully necessary. I just find it easier and I like to have a nice big brush. This one I use the number 10 size. Again, you use whatever you want. This is just to get a lot of coverage um, on my canvas. I use a, like a fine point usually. This one is a, actually a four. I have ones that are finer, like they're like a two, but I find the bristles that kind of got really funky on them where this one just kept its shape way nicer. So again, whatever give you a nice detailed line, use that. And then I have like a medium brush and this one happens to also be a four and it's more of a, like a flat bristle one. So um, I do have some other brushes too that I sometimes use, but if you have at least like a, a nice big one for coverage, a medium one for like more medium detailed work and a fine one for fine point, um, you'll be pretty much set and ready to go. Cool, all right, so we're gonna get started. Oh, Nira, I'm so glad that you're here. It's the first time here. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. Hi, Denise. I'm excited you're here, too. Yay. It's so great. I love I love, I love, seeing the old names. I love seeing the new names. It's, it's so great. Okay. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to move the camera momentarily so it's more on my actual painting and less on me and more on this. So even though I'm sure, you know, you'll miss seeing my face, but we'll focus on the painting this time. So first, let's talk about how I'm going to approach this painting. So again, for people who have painted with me before, you everything I've just said and what I'm going to say, you already know. Um, I always start with whatever's furthest in the background whenever I paint. Um, so what we're going to start with is the sky. So what you want to do is, you want to start thinking about where you're going to be positioning and how much of your canvas is going to be the sky. So again, I'm going to be doing it in this portrait style, which is similar to our inspiration image. Again, you can do it whichever way you want. If you want to switch it and do it landscape, go for it. The same concepts will apply, but then you're going to just be stretching out certain components of it, right? Just keep that in mind. So with the sky, I'm going to, if you look at it, it's about a quarter of the top of the painting there. So I'm going to look at my painting and I'm going to just eyeball it and say, okay, about like a quarter of the painting, that's where the sky is going to be. And that's what I'm going to start with. Once we have the sky in place, the next thing that I'm going to start working on is the water. Then we'll build into the sand and then we'll build things from there afterwards. Okay, so that's going to be what we're going to be focusing on first. So now that we know what we're going to focus on, uh, we're going to be putting some paint on our uh, palette. Now acrylic paint can dry very quickly. So you can always, I would suggest, just feel free to keep adding as you need. Um, instead of putting like a big glob that might dry. If it dries, then it doesn't really um, work as it well. So let's do that. So let's start, we want some blue. So I'm, again, I'm using my tropical blue and see how that goes. It's so light, this blue is so light. So my tropical blue is like, oh, yikes. Okay, let's see how that's gonna go. I'm gonna, oh, so scared. Okay, I'm gonna use like a drop of my black on here too kind of plopped out very easily. I literally just put like a little, little bit on the side. So I, I'm going to need to darken that. 
Yikes. Okay, we'll see what happens. Um, and then I'm going to use my white. Get some white on here. I might have to go back into that Copenhagen blue because I feel like that blue is going to be way too light. I have some white on there too. I think I am because that blue is just so light. <sighs> okay. The reason why too is I'm almost out of blue, so I grabbed the next blue I had. I didn't realize how low I was on like the, the more of the... I would call more of a true blue, even though the Copenhagen blue is already kind of weirdly, like a weird tint too. That's the Copenhagen blue from the dollar store. So I just want to show you that I do have those two blues, and that's more. I don't, normally don't do that, but um, yeah, that's kind of poopy. But I think I'm going to stick with more of the darker blue, I think, and go from there. All right, I'm going to move this now. So smart. Uh, Jody just said that... Uh, to use a spray bottle to keep the palette moist. Really good idea. I love that idea. Okay, so I'm gonna just set this up. Let me just move a few things to get this slightly closer. Physically closer. There we go. Okay, I have the weird, no, that makes it worse. Let's see if I can get that glare out. There we go. That's a little better. We don't need that. Don't mind that glare at the bottom. Okay, here we go. Hi, Annie. Glad you're joining. Awesome. Okay. So the way we're going to start the sky. So we obviously have a lot of like cloud mist going on. So I don't want you to worry too much about the specificness of it being like clouds. We want to get the vibe and the feeling of all these different kind of kind of movement happening. So I'm going to start off. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to start off by wetting. I'm going to start off by wetting the canvas first. So I'm just going to get my big brush and I'm going to get a little bit of water and I'm just going to put some water on the canvas to start. And this will help to spread our paint and help to blend it a bit. You want just, you want it to be covered in water, but you don't want it to be soaked. You want it to be just damp. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it maybe slightly lower than my quarter. I'm gonna bring it a little bit lower because that my water can still go a little bit on top of it if necessary. So I wanna make sure it goes further south enough, okay. So now I'm gonna just put in, get my blue. Now, a couple cool things you can see. So the lines of the sky, they kind of, they don't go straight. They're kind of going to, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I kind of worked. So I'm gonna kind of start putting a little bit of streaks in here, just with the blue. And then I'm gonna start to blend it in the water as I go. And I'm gonna get some white and I'm going to put it in some of the gaps in that same kind of sideways vibe. And I'm going to start just to blend it a bit. When I say blend it, I just mean like I'm bringing my brush over the areas. It's already starting to have this like sweeping motion happening from very little paint on the canvas already, okay? And I'm gonna keep doing this little dance. So I'm gonna put a little bit more, like little stripies of blue, and in some areas put a little more. I'm going to go back and get my white and start. I'm using the same brush for this, so and then I'm just going to start putting the white paint around and then just blending it. So I guess how I'm using my this brush, this brush, this big fat brush, when it's flat, it gives me a nice straight 
like thin kind of line. So I'm using that thinness to do those little streaks. And then I'm blending more and I'm going more flat with the brush. I'm blending. And that just kind of mixes it all together. Hi, Joe. Glad you're stopping in to say hi. Are you painting today? Okay. So I just put some more white and I'm just going to keep doing this little dance until I am digging and I like that I've A, fully covered my canvas with paint. I guess it's not really a requirement. Like if you want the canvas to still show through, I'm sure that could still be all right. But I'm a little bit weird with having the canvas show through when there's paint. So I definitely still want there to be paint, even if I just have white paint on top of it. And I was going to say be something, but I don't remember what my train of thought was. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at A. Okay. That's pretty. That feels nicely windstruck. And I feel like... You can kind of then create, like, already by just putting those strokes in that way, it has the sense of movement and the sense that there are, like, clouds and stuff happening without actually popping in the clouds. But we can still do that a little bit, too, and that can be quite fun. I'm going to put a little bit more blue in some spots. And so by doing this, too, we're working on wet so it's wet on wet blending. This is this technique. So as you saw, I didn't like pre-mix or try to get like a, oh shoot, there's some black under my blue. One second, please. Just, uh, maybe my sky's gonna be a little gray. It's okay. So since we're doing like a wet on wet, it's letting us get really nice blends happening. But we're working pretty quickly as we go. So it can stay wet and give us the control that we need to get this blend happening the way we want it to happen. Hi, Asif. Oh, no worries. <clears throat> can I paint the sound of birds? <laughs> I can try. I actually did do a... What was it? Earlier this week, I actually did paint a bird for fun, which was not really my... I normally haven't done that too much. So, yeah, maybe I'll show you guys later. <laughs> I think I put it on my Instagram, but I don't know if it was my personal or this account, to be honest. I'll take a look. And Ashley says that um, she's not good at, at oh, the wet blending, so instead of water, I put a layer of white paint and blend the blue in. That's a great tip, Ashley. Thank you for sharing that. That's fantastic. And that's it, right? Like, again, this, this for me, I really like the wet blending, and it works really well for me, and I have good control over it. I've always enjoyed that. Um, but, yeah, using as a layer of white paint, too, that will still that will get the job done very well. And the thing with water, which is can be very annoying, is that if you put too much, it can kind of just become a bit of a sloppy mess, <laughs> to put it plainly. Um, but it can also like thin everything out, so you don't have as much like density. Like it doesn't it doesn't really show as well. And you need to put more layers. So there, there's a lot of benefit to using the straight up white paint um, on your canvas. Okay, so I'm, I'm digging this motion. I think I'm going to kind of keep this going. I like it a lot. Um, I do want to play and try and pop in a, 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 a more of a defined cloud, and I think I want to do it still when it's pretty wet. So I am going to switch to my medium brush just because I think it's going to give me a bit more control. The brush I use this medium one is also um, 
kind of similar to that big fat one where it's like kind of thin on the side and then it's more it's wider so I'm gonna put some white paint on there and the clouds are still kind of moving in this kind of trajectory so I'm going to put like a line kind of where I want this path to be so just like that it's almost like non-existent really and then I'm just gonna start puffing up making my cloud come to life a bit and as I'm doing it because it's still on wet paint a lot of it is some parts are a bit drier the blue's gonna mix in but I'm gonna use that to my advantage to kind of create more layers in the clouds so right now that white I put on blended into the blue quite a bit but we're still getting this we get this mass happening here which is good and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep cleaning my brush I'm gonna get more white paint and I'm going to put another layer kind of on top of what I just did. But still leave a little bit of the blue poking through and blending. I have to go back and get white paint quite a bit because since it's wet, every time I go, t I put my brush on the canvas, it'll pick up the blue paint, right? I feel like I went really straight, and maybe I shouldn't have. I think I need to be a bit messier. That makes more sense. Mess up this line a little bit. Ah! Drop things. Hey, Paula! I saw your note saying that, that you like this one, but your husband liked the other one. That option was so close to winning too, it's crazy. Hi Diana, yes, absolutely. This will be on replay, so you'll be able to watch it anytime you like on my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Parties, or under the um, videos tab on my Facebook page. I don't have any intention of taking it down, so. And feel free to join in whenever is convenient for you. The only thing I ask is if you do it, I want to see your paintings. So send them to me. Either share them in the group so everyone can see them, or if you're a little shy and you don't want to show other people, then just send it to me privately. Because I like to see your paintings. Cool. You are most welcome, my dear. All right, so I'm gonna, I am gonna—I wanna put a bit more of like a cloud vibe here too, but here it's already dried more. So you're gonna see that when I'm putting this cloud in where it's already been dry, and you can play with it too. Maybe you, you prefer to put the clouds in when things are dry, and maybe you'll prefer to put it in when they're wet. And it's good to play with that and see. So different people, again, you'll have different ways that you prefer to do it. And there's no right or wrong way. Right? You could just go in and put like big cartoon clouds and it would be right. It, it's totally fine. Whatever makes you happy. That's really the most important part about this whole process. So what I'm noticing here is that, so as you can, as you may be able to see, I'm not sure, my video just went kind of funky. I'm also upgrading my internet connection. So by next week, we'll see if my, uh, everything will run smoother <laughs> on my end. <laughs> but um, I can't see anything if you can tell as so much. But this one is a lot less blended because I put it right on dry. So it's already been, it's already dried by the time I got there, which this one was painted when it was still wet behind. So this one had a lot more blending and a lot more of the blues were popping through the white. 
Um, so you might, might want to go back in when it's more like fully dry and put in a bit more white just to highlight certain spots. This one I put in when the paint was dry, and so now it shows up a lot more. So I might want to even put in a little bit of blue, potentially, to dull it out slightly. But I'm not sure yet. I might just play with that a bit. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit and just... Oh, thank you, Diana. I, I yeah, I have for anyone who joined me the last couple of weeks, I've been putting on just some like nature sounds in the background. Inspired by the birds that, that do trip outside. Because there's like a big tree that hangs into my backyard. Um, and there's so many birds and it's wonderful, especially now. With spring and everything. And since I can't use music, I can use the, you can use music, from my understanding, on like live videos. So if I was just doing a live video and that was it, then I could play music. Because you'd be seeing me, listen to the music, and then it'd be done. But because I want to keep my videos available for people to see again, what you might notice if you watch any of my previous videos that have music in them, there might be some sections where they just fully mute everything out. So I'm talking and all of a sudden I'll be muted because they claim a copyright violation on certain songs. You're not allowed to do that. So, hence, nature. There has yet to be a claim on nature sounds. Which I'm very, very happy about. So I'd like to have something going on. You know, like... Definition. Bring that out a bit. Okay, I think I want to bring this down a bit more. And add a little bit over here too. Just the impression that there's a bit of roundness and shapes in the air somewhere instead of just like streaky lines. Streaky lines look pretty good too, I gotta say. I do like them quite a bit. I kind of digging that a lot too. go a little bit overboard with these clouds. Okay. <laughs> you're, that's hilarious. You're right. The birds are going to be coming around being like, uh, feed me for using my music. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, thank you, Diana. <clears throat> they used to scare me so much. Clouds used to freak me right out. I used to think, oh, I used to overthink them. I think that's the best advice I can give you is try not to overthink it and try not to think of them as clouds. That somehow helps me. Like I try and think of it as like 
get color and movement. So the movement is kind of the streakiness. We have this mix of blue and whites. And then I want to add a little bit of softness. I, and I feel like, to me, that helps. Because when I really think about, like, clouds, or if I think about, you know, I'm painting a boat or whatever it is, I, I feel like there's, like, certain notions in my head that it has to, like, fit. And somehow, I'm usually disappointed. <laughs> so I try to make it, like, yeah. Just paint the color, paint the motion. I feel like that helped me a lot. But thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> and the streaky line. I like the streaky lines. I think it's. I think it works well. Do you think the sky can be too skinny? Do you mean skinny like you, you made it too small, like it's too short? Is that what you mean, Ashley? Let me know. And if that's the case, I would say no. I don't think it can be. I think you can make it smaller if you wanted to easily. Okay. And so I, I didn't really talk about it as I was doing it, but I realized I probably should have. So what I was doing is I put, like, kind of these, like, cloudiness, and then I went back, and I got a little bit of blue with white, so I kind of just lightened it, but I didn't, like, pre-mix it. I just put some blue on my brush, and I put some white on my brush. And then I went back, and then as it was still a little wet, I just kind of went and just put some streaks into the clouds. And I feel like that kind of just integrated the streakiness in the background to the fluffy clouds. And I thought that worked well. Although I did get some more black on my paintbrush, which I did not mean to. And it, um, I don't like that. <laughs> I try to dull out this black. Oh, it's hiding under my blue. Annoying. Yeah, dulled out a little bit. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave my sky for now. You can always go back and touch it up too. Yeah, I don't think so. I honestly don't think it can be too skinny because the sky is nice and it does give like some nice balance, I suppose, to the painting. But really, like, that's not the focus, right? Like, you have so much else going on. I think really, like, this whole water, I don't even know. What would I even say the focus is, to be honest? There's so much going on. Just such a nice relaxing scene because I mean it really depends I think we can do a lot with all of these flowers in the front and that could end up being where your eye gets fully drawn to um, so no I, I, I really I don't think it can be <laughs> yes okay let's now we are going to go to the water so now let's think about how we want this to happen. So, so the water is the next thing that's in like the background and that we're going to have to build things on top of later, right? So we're going to play with this water. Now this water is, is very interesting because um, in a lot of other paintings that we've done together, um, you, we have water and it kind of just goes straight across. So it's a lot almost easier to deal with. This is not going to be too difficult, but we have to think of it a little differently because we're going to have to have it kind of like a darker line here for the horizon to separate the sky from the water. And then we want it to be darker and then we want it to be blended, but we want it to, <laughs> I'm fully writing here. We want it to be blended more in the circular way to have like the water kind of being here. So it's darker here-ish and it gets a little bit lighter. And then we're going to use white to get it when it like starts hitting the sand. And then we need like a light kind of golden yellow, brown, golden brown, not yellow, <laughs> for like the sand, right? So that's how we're going to build it out. Um, and again, we're going to move a little bit quickly to get a nice blend going between the different layers. And then once we have a nice, the color is on there in this kind of blend, then we'll go in and put in all the little accents and like touch it up a bit more. Okay, so let's, I think I'm going to go back. Am I going to go back to my big brush? I think so. Ooh, I definitely didn't clean it off as well as I should have. Be careful with your brushes because acrylic, once it dries, it's kind of can ruin the brush. So you got to be very careful with that. I just realized even in that moment, I shouldn't have left it the way I did. Let me just clean out my other medium brush. Let's be on the safe side. <laughs> I agree, right, Dana? Wouldn't that be nice? Okay. 
that'd be so nice to have like a nice chair relaxing. You could, I definitely, you could definitely put that in your painting for sure. Cha again, chairs kind of freak me out because it's too structured. <laughs> You'll notice most of my paintings don't have very structured items. They'll have a lot more like flowy kind of vibe. And yes, so that is strategic. I do pick things that I feel more comfortable with often. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get kind of like a, I'm putting a little bit of black into my blue just to get it a little darker so I can create where I want my horizon line to be, and this is gonna be a bit weird. If you're flat, it makes it a little bit easier to put it on. I'm gonna try to right, put this in. So I'm gonna put my horizon kind of like here. Oh my, I feel like I'm too high. Nope. Okay, is that straight? I'm just gonna move for a moment. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's fine. If you're doing the horizon, you can definitely put something else. If you look at something to give you a better guide for it. Eyeballed it, which we'll see if it worked out well enough. So, I'm going to now put in my blue. I'm going to start to mix it into that line. Okay, I'm going to bring it all the way across, even though I know it's lighter and I know there's land here, but that's okay. I'm going to bring this across just to blend that darkness a little bit. Blend the darkness. Okay. I'm going to bring in, continue this darker blue in here. So I'm just using straight up paint. I'm not putting anything else on the canvas. I'm not putting water this time. I'm just going with the paint. I think this needs to be a little darker. I'm just gonna put in a bit of that. Get a little darker, put a little bit of black. Look, black is super powerful, so if you're using black, use like a quarter of what you would think whatever you think you want to use put in a quarter of it and then just add little bits to it black will take over your painting super powerful okay so we have this going here <laughs> oh actually has a really good point or a suggestion so uh for sand the color Light Mocha by Apple Barrel is a really good color for the sand. That's a great tip. Thank you. For the blue, so this blue I'm using, so I showed, I think at the beginning of the video I showed you that I had two blues. So I had this like tropical blue and I have this Copenhagen blue. And it's not by any particular point that I have these blues. I grabbed the tropical one because I'm low on that Copenhagen and I realized I didn't have any more blue on hand. So I'm using the Copenhagen one because I feel like it's more of a actual blue. Um, the tropical blue definitely looks like there's been like white added to it. So that's the one I'm using. And then I'm putting a little bit of black in it um, just to make it a little darker closer to where the horizon line is. As you can see, it's a little darker around there. And I'm just bringing it down kind of into a, starting to get this like curve going. Okay, and I'm gonna start, oh, I, I don't know if I'm gonna put that tropical blue in. So it might look nice there. You know what, I'm gonna go just for white for now and then we'll, no, I need to clean my brush a little bit. Get some of the blue off and then I'm gonna use my white. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put it in here, and then I'm going to bring it upwards. I'm just 
So we'll bring the white into here. Now when I do water, I like to keep my brush strokes very flippy floppy. <laughs> that is the technical term. Flippy floppy. No, it's just like I kind of just keep it very loose. Loose is probably the correct way to say it. This is actually what I'm doing. Very loose and so just like a little back and forth. And I feel like that always adds good texture to it. That's kind of how I feel about water. Loosey. Okay. Let's see how this trop. I'm going to use a tropical because I already put it on there. So and it does actually kind of give me that color that's in the original, isn't it? Yeah, it does. Okay. I'll line that with that tropical one. If I didn't have the tropical blue, I would just be using white, and then it wouldn't be as, like, boom, bright, but it would still have a nice blend into the white with it. Okay. Now let's keep going out with this white. And again, I'm going to go further than what I think, so I'm definitely going to be painting stuff over this because I have some land happening. But I just want to make sure. that um, I'm covering everywhere that I would want to cover. Uh, I got, I need more white. I use the white real quick. Thank you so much, Allison, from Sydney. That's so cool. I love seeing when people are checking in from all over the place. It's so, so, so cool. Make me so happy. Sort of, you kind of go this loosey goosey, flippy floppy kind of strokes. Then already it's starting to have again more movement. It's still blending it nicely. Um, this is kind of like lacking a bit. I need to add a bit more paint. To that. I feel like that's not not where I want it to be. It's a little bit weird. And I feel like I want a bit straight and I want it to be a bit more like circular? No. Rounded? Rounded. That's the word. I'm just gonna go put some stack of blue. The Copenhagen. I'm just gonna circle it a bit. So I notice that in my little flip floppy loose I went a little too straight and I want this water to feel like it is more rounded the shoreline is a bit rounded that's what I want to do Bring this out and try to keep it a bit more rounded. Still try to be a little loosey, but bring it a little bit more round. Okay, now white. Alright, I think that's good. That's that's goodish. Goodish. I think we need to go to our brown. Now, if you have a premixed brown, definitely you can grab that and you can lighten it with, um, again, depending on the shade. If you have like a shade that's already kind of in that tone that you like, so that's great. If you don't and you need to mix brown, 
You can mix brown by mixing equal parts of red, yellow, and blue. And if you mix equal parts of it, you will get a brown. And then depending, if you, if you put too much blue, like if you do a bit more blue than the other ones, it's going to end up being more gray. So I would suggest trying to be as equal as possible. Or if you want to play with the, the color, then you'd want to maybe put a little more red in it. I kind of like the way that looks. Um, that is what I would suggest if you need to mix a brown. I do have a brown that is mixed already, but I want to lighten it anyways. So the brown, this brown that I happen to have is called cinnamon brown and it's very, already very dark. Like I, it's way too dark for what I want. Um, I'm going to mix the cinnamon brown, I think with a bit of yellow first, and then I'm going to mix some white to lighten it. That is going to be my plan. So I can start getting the sand color going, so we can then have it like the water hitting it nicely. So, let me just show that. So that's that cinnamon brown, which is pretty dark. That's yellow, and there's my white. So I'm just going to off camera just because it's easier for me to mix it here, but then I'll show you when I mix it. So I like to lighten when it's like a premix brown. I like to use yellow to lighten it up. The white sometimes I feel like that can work sometimes, but I prefer it more. So I have kind of like that kind of goldeny brown color there. And I do like that. I think I'm going to use that for the sand to start off there. Okay. So, all right. So now we were going to have sand pretty much, and I'm just going to pop this in. And I, now as I put it on the canvas, I definitely want to lighten it more, but I'm not going to stress too much right now about it. I'm just going to get it on where I want my sand. It's like a big, and with the cheap dollar store paints too, you might get clumps of paint in your paint because it likes to dry out and the bottles are not as, um, they don't seal as well. I'm going to get a bit of yellow and now I'm going to dip it in the light and just throw it right on top. See what I can get with this. Yeah, I definitely want it lighter. I'm still going to have all those plants happening. Let's keep that in mind. And I'm just kind of going right into the light now to lighten it. Because it definitely is darker than I want it to be. And start to dra drag that into the water. So with the white. Do not go away, my screen. Come back here. There we go. Okay. And that just has a nice little gradient from there. From the white to the sandiness. I want to have greenery and grasses and stuff, but I still want this to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to keep lightening now by throwing white on top of it. And so, if you saw how I did that, so I'm going to just talk it through again. So, I first of all, I had a premixed brown. I put some yellow into it, and then I mixed it on my palette for a bit and got a bit of a lighter color. When I put it on, I realized that it was darker than I had wanted it to be, but I still used it. I put it big, big splotches of it all over the place. <laughs> Try not to paint your iPad as you do it. <laughs> Um, and then I lightened it a little bit with some yellow first, and then I went over it all with white. And then by just doing that right on the canvas, it already has this, like, different notes and colors, and I like it a lot. So it's, for me, I find it a very, like, easy way to get a blend going and make, and make it look really interesting. And it's not very difficult to do. Just let me do it right there. See? And then I used white here to blend into the water area. Okay. 
So now that we have our base, um, we're obviously going to put in like, you know, our rocks and all those things. But before I go there, I want to put in a little bit more detail into the water. Just put a bit more streaks in it. Um, just to give it a little bit of motion. So you might want to use your medium brush. You might want to use your fine brush. It really depends up to you. Whatever one you have a bit more control over. Um, and I can hold paint well. Hello, tongue me, yes. Uh, where can I get a replay? Absolutely. So you can get a replay um, on Lisa's Painting Parties, the, uh, my YouTube channel. So it won't be there yet, but within, well, by probably within a couple hours after this is done, I'll be loading it on there. It'll be available. Or you can watch it under the videos tab on my Facebook page. But those are the spots where you can do it. And um, it will be up there ongoing, so you'll be able to access it whenever you so desire. Cool. Let's, I don't know if I want to go with that medium brush or if I want to go with the finer one. I think I'm going to go with my finer one. Okay. I just wet it slightly, just so, just for funsies. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of white. And so if you look, there's like little, like white little indicators to kind of show that there's like some movement. So back here, I'm going to kind of just put some little lines in. Put some lines to kind of show because there's going to be a bit of a, an inlet over here. So I'm kind of putting some curved. <laughs> And I'm putting my hand in my wet paint, of course, because I think I do that on every every live that I do, at least once. I don't think you're a real painter until you put your hand in your paint. That, that's that's my that's gonna be my my hot take on it. <laughs> put some little lines in here. La, la, la. So this. Hitting, moving. I'm kind of making them like a little like squiggly. the shore and all those spots. Okay, and there's also a few little ones that happen. A bit further out. Of movement happening. It's looking pretty cool. Oh, fantastic point, Ashley. Thank you for that. Oh, Suzanne, great idea. I had no idea. That's fantastic. You can share the video on your personal page. 
and you can uh, for all you only you can watch it anytime. That's fantastic. Oh no, Diana! <laughs> oh no! Well, now I guess they're your painting pajamas. I think that's what's happening. So for these ones here, so these are very light. So again, I just went in and I just put on like little white. It's hard because apparently my screen's not showing me if you can see my camera very well. So hopefully it's not too glary and you can see what I did. I just put like little white lines in the water there. I didn't do anything else. And I just went with the, the motion I already had. So I kind of made a little like back and forth with white and just get a little streakies and let the paintbrush do its thing. So I got a little bit thinner here and then I got a little bit, I guess I pressed a little bit harder down, but really not intentionally. I just kind of went with the flow of it. Um, and that's how I kind of made it look. So it looks like it's hitting the sides here. So that's how I did that. Um, and then we do have our little sailboats in the background and I think we can put them in at this point. We're at, the, we're at the point of putting in some of those sailboats. Why not? Let's put them in. We're using white. We're using my thin brush. Why not? Okay. So we're going to have these little, have little, I just got their, their sails really. So I'm just going to go down like this and almost do like a, a D, a D shape. <laughs> uh, I keep doing it too. Like this a little, a little boat in the back, chilling out, enjoying the beautiful day. Okay, awesome. Okay, and then there's one even further, but it's tinier. There we go. Little another little D. And there's one more over here. Ooh. Now here is everything very dry here. See so this white paint is going on very easily. Also got our little boats. Oh, thanks for jumping in, Yuru. I'm so happy. Definitely do. I can't wait to see it. Okay, perfect, Dan. I just want to make sure that's what you were referring to when you asked for it. So I was like, yeah, it's it's literally like, again, it's waves, but I looked at them as white squigglies, and that's what I did. <laughs> that's how I approached them, and I feel like I feel like I, I'm able to do them better when I think of it that way, which I might still go back and touch it up later, like when we put in some more of the land, but for now, we're, we're good with it. Okay, so next up, I want to put in these rocks, okay? because they're still more in the background than our green space and the flowers and whatnot, right? Because that stuff might actually go on top of it, depending on how big we want some of our flowers to, to land. And again, you might like to do these types of flowers. Maybe you want to do something totally different, right? And you're completely able to, I 100% encourage it. So there's different types of flowers that you like more, go nuts. Um, but for now, before we get to that point, we have these lovely rocks. So these rocks, I wouldn't go full black. I would actually go with like a purple. If you have like a dark purple, maybe like I would use like a little bit of touch of black to get it a bit darker on some sides, but I wouldn't go full black. I think if we go full black on these, they're going to stand out too much. That's what I think. So I'm going to, I have a quite a bit of, of blue still there. I'm going to add a little bit of red to my palette and I'm going to mix up like a deep purple and that is what I'm going to play with with those rocks okay so let's mix that do, 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 do. And I think I'm gonna use this kind of deep purple to go yeah I like it so I kind of mix that's how that's the purple I have right now you can see that it's so difficult especially now that I can't see what you can see Oh, internet connection. Okay, so where's this rock going to land? So I think this big, big guy is going to land here. So this guy reminds me of like a hat. 
So I'm going to think about like a hat and I'm going to plot it in kind of like how I think and make sure it's kind of jaggedy. I don't want him to be too soft but this brush may not give me what I want. So I'm going to put this in a bit and then I think I'm going to go with my thinner brush just try and give it a bit more edginess because right now that looks really weird. Okay, but that's okay. I'm going to put in another one beside it. some weird shapes right now. I do not like the size brush that I'm using. It's not giving me the control that I want it to. So I'm going to switch up and get a thinner brush. Probably my thinnest. My thinnest one is very thin. I think I might have one that might be a little bit better. Right, Diana, absolutely. Yeah, I think it looks I think it looks more natural. I do like to use black. I love to use it obviously when we're doing like silhouettes and whatnot, but then obviously that makes everything so much more striking, right? Um but when it's a painting like this, I yeah, I think it would take away from it quite a bit. Okay. That's gonna allow me a bit more control to make some like edges happen on this rock. That's a bit better. Get a nice point on my rock hat. I'm noticing too it's still a bit wet behind it and so I'm getting a lot of white is still blending because it's pulling the brown that I put on which I thought it was pretty dry but I was mistaken and so I might have to wait a little bit I might have to move on from them let it dry a bit and then I can come back and be more detailed and darken up these edges more happening over there sounds pretty cool all right so I'm gonna leave that momentarily but before I get more into putting all the details I need to come back to that um, and then touch it up a bit more because right now it's still showing up a bit too white so I need it to dry out a little bit and then I'm gonna come back to that and then I want to put some shadow and I also want to build the shadow on the actual 
for now we're going to leave it like that and it's going to look a little bit funky for a little bit. Turn another bit of my coffee before I start. Mm -hmm. Start the next part. Okay. So the next step of this, of course, would technically be finishing those first, but we'll leave that for a moment. We want to start building in this green land that is obviously in this background here. And then it starts showing a nice curve and then it continues, pops out and then comes closer. So where we have all of this loveliness in the front. So we're going to do green. So if you do not have a premixed green, you can use blue and yellow and mix green and you can do equal parts and then you can decide how it's looking and either put a bit more blue or a bit more yellow depending on um, how it's mixing. Or if you have a premixed green, you can use that as well. That's up to you. If you have a premixed green, um, and I would suggest also lightening it. If you if you want to lighten it, I would use yellow first. And then I might go with white afterwards, but I feel like the, ye the yellow lightening it makes it more of like, well, obviously more of a yellow green, which sounds like it, that makes complete sense, obviously. But um, yes, I, I will stand by my statement. That sounds very obvious. But it looks more natural, like it has those tones, right? Okay, so I'm going to get some green. Okay. And then I'm going to start building some land. I'm just going to start at that horizon line and just put in a bit of a green land mass back here. And then I'm going to curve it down and you'll see in this picture there's obviously some like brown so I'm guessing there's like another beach over on that side for the sake of what we're doing right here I'm just going to add I'll put the yellow in here too just to lighten it okay so I just added a little bit more yellow in here too That was also partially to help disguise the horizon line that was so easy to see here. Okay, so I'm going to start like that and just put like that there. Okay, and then I'm going to continue with the screen. So it kind of juts out here. Now these lines aren't super straight. They're a little jaggedy because this land mass is not with a cookie cutter. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to build this down. I think I'm just going to let that hang that way. I'm just going to fill this in with green for now. Not worrying too much about how flat and weird it looks. Just going to start covering this up with some green. And as you go, if you want to put a little bit of yellow, you can just start you know, do some wet blending like me. Put some yellow in some spots just to give it a little bit of variation. Go back to the green. Bring that down. Bring that down. I'm painting the sides of my canvas as I go. I haven't I didn't actually do too much of the sky that way. I'm off today. Normally I'm like all on that. Paint the side of your canvas. Today I did not even talk about that until right now. So weird. Okay. Okay. So I am kind of doing a, as I come down here, I'm going to start to be a bit more like loose to kind of give the impression of some foliage that's happening. I'm going to use my brush. So again, I'm loading it up with green and then using it. So normally it's flat. I'm using it kind of on its side to kind of give the impression of like some greens that live here. By doing this, then I'm kind of creating this idea that there's like some grass or some 
greenery stuff that's happening here. And again, I'm not doing very much to, to create that. I'm just giving it a little bit of texture with my brush just to give that impression. So now I kind of created that nice vibe happening there. I think I need to go a bit higher here, actually. And then we can add some different colors to it to give it a bit more. Maybe I'm going to have this stick out a little bit on the side there too. Okay, cool. To get a bit more depth. And I'm just going to keep this going with the screen. And instead of just like painting this like flat back and forth on, I am kind of sticking with this feeling of like I'm putting blades of grass. That's that's what I'm thinking in my head as I'm doing it. So that all the strokes that I've done, when you see it close, it, even though it's all the same color and it's going to blend very well, it has this motion of it being a bunch of grass. So it's already going to give that impression of it. And here, you see those blades happening. As you get further back, it's just like weird and blendy. And that's why when I did the back here, I moved my brush a lot like back and forth. I didn't just go straight or down. I went back and forth and kind of made it look, I was going to say messy, but I don't know if that's the right word. Cool. So we already have that kind of like vibe, this like focal. And now we need to start putting in some of the different like shades and contours so we have more of this land that's happening right so how are we going to do that okay so let's play a little bit with this yellow so i'm going to put a little so i have my my brush is still very green and i have a bit of yellow on here and i'm going to start with the side and just put maybe that was a bad spot to start because i put some yellow there already okay let's put a little bit of yellow like here so i'm just going to put like little lines to create almost like a, a little ridge. I'm going to put some more here. Okay. And then what else are we going to do? We want to put more in. I want to put more in here, but I feel like... Here. Okay. There's like little dots of color. I was touching it a little bit. It's almost like a city or something's happening. I don't know. It's definitely not like blades of grass back there. I don't know what's happening there though. Okay. And then I want to put in a bit more, a few like little lines of the yellow. But again, because everything's still wet, as I'm putting in these lines, Every time I touch the paint, I get green on my brush, and it blends it. And so now it's starting to look interesting, and a lot more, it looks like you did a lot more work than what you're doing, and it's, and it's looking a lot fuller. And then what I would suggest when you do this process is just make sure that you are being conscious of how you're holding your brush and that you're not always making the same stroke or in the same direction. So try to like make sure to move your brush from one way to another. I know for me, I tend to get stuck in patterns and when I look sometimes, I'm like, whoa, this looks very like <laughs> nature doesn't, nature works in patterns in some ways, but not so directly, right? Okay, so now by putting those yellow in there, it's already happening a lot nicer where it's, uh, you have a nice foliage, it looks a lot thicker. Loretta, I am not outside. I this 
uh, birds in the background is actually a YouTube video um, so I can have some kind of noise happening since I cannot play music because of copyright laws. So my solution is nature sounds. And it was inspired because I do have lots of birds in my backyard and my window is open and they, I can hear some of them chirping outside. But this is more consistent. I really don't like just having the silence. So yeah, so they are recorded birds. <laughs> but it is nice. I agree. Okay. Let us continue. All right. So I want it to be a little bit darker as well. So I think I might get a little bit of brown, I think, and mix it into my green. And it's like a dirty, dirty green. I don't know if that was the best choice. Maybe get a little bit of blue. You know what? That's probably better. Yeah, that is better. I okay, put a little bit of brown, but then I put a little bit of blue in it. I think that's the green I want to play with. Okay. So now I want to put in some darker elements. So here is a bit of a darker spot here. I guess it's almost like a cliff side or something. I don't really sure what's going on. If anything that's weird, remember, you can make a giant flower and cover it. That's a great thing. <laughs> and I might do that. We'll see. We'll see how all of this turns out, and then I'll decide what I want to do. So I'm just trying to go over some of these spots, make it a little bit darker. Okay, and then we also want to have some darker spots in all of this foliage that we created. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I don't know. Kind of just do it until you feel like it looks good. Okay. Do a little bit blurrier. Okay, then this is a little bit dark too, so I'm just going to add a little bit back here as well. And that brushes everywhere. Alrighty then. Now, I do want to get some beach happening back here, so I'm going to just put in a little bit of brown on the shoreline. The beachy kind of color that we had. I'm going to pop it in here. That vibe of it happening. It's kind of neat. I'm just gonna put in some green. Mix it in a little bit. This doesn't look super. There you go. Kind of blended a bit. That's cool. Okay. A little background has a vibe going on. Cool. All right, next up, what else? Okay, we, so I wanna go back and play with these rocks as well, cause I'm not done with those yet. But, do I 
wanted to go to that part first. I think I do. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to go back. Yeah, now they're dry enough. Okay, let's do that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so I need to mix some more red and blue to get a purple. going to go over this a bit because there's some lightness that I was not digging in it. Just darkening that up a bit. So I just darken or just change that pigment slightly by putting a little bit more blue in it. It's still very dark and I'm just shading one side of it on the rocks just to kind of give it a bit of a shadow side. And then I'm going to lighten it up slightly. And need it actually a little bit more slightly than that. Let's try that and see. And just put a little bit of lightness back, but where it makes sense. Like just not where <laughs> my sand was kind of coming through before. Okay, so I'm just touching it very lightly. Just because there's some like ridges in these rocks. There we go. So it just gives it a bit of movement. So I'll just hold that a bit closer so you can see that a bit more. Hopefully that helps a bit. Valerie Reese, I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Okay, so now, now I'm going to paint the shadow of my hat rocks. That's what they will be known to me from now on. Hat rocks. Okay. Uh, which one do I want to use? I want to use my medium brushy. And so now I want to get this like shadow happening. So I want that purple, but I want it, I think, to be a little bit more red. So I'm adding a little bit of red into that purple. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to play with it and then see, and then I might have to change it up. So it's a bit of this reddish, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm just going to add some lines in the sand. Just going very lightly on the side just to put in a little bit. And yeah, it's definitely a little bit light, but I'm kind of, I do like it. I do need to adjust it slightly though, but... I like it. So it's definitely a little bit too red, but let's darken it up a little bit. 
a little bit of that blue into my shadow area, but I still want it to have some of that red happening. Okay, so that's working. That's cool. I'm going to clean that out. I'm going to get my brush it's dryer. And then I want to get that sand color. And then I want to just like dust in the sand a little bit into this shadow of it and mess it up a bit so it's not so yeah I think that looks better yes that that is what I want absolutely cool next up is what all right so next I would say is we got to put in all of our lovely flowers however we so decide to and also there's like a butterfly that's hanging out over here so that's kind of neat so we can definitely play with that and have lots of fun with it which is pretty good so it's now what seven almost 7 30 so that's not bad so we've been painting for an hour and a half which is pretty great and so now we can have fun and put in those flowers so I'll have another sip of my coffee and then we'll start that Mm hmm how are all of you doing you enjoying it so far is it working out okay there are also some like darker lines here too I guess because I guess maybe there's some reminisce of like maybe the water that did hit there before maybe there's a little bit of sand pile up that would be kind of good to put into you know what, I think I'm going to do that right now before I jump into my flower zone. And a little bit of brown. Put some line, like just little bits of lines. I think that does look, that makes sense, looks good, okay cool. Oh that's such a great idea Diana! Diana says that she might put in some baby turtles running into the water. That's such a great idea, that would look so cute! Okay, so flowers, so I definitely like Though there's some bright red flowers going on, I think the red will make things pop really nicely. So I'm definitely going to stick with like some red flowers for sure. I also kind of like the purple too because it ties in like some of the rocks and it kind of gives some balance to the painting because you have some like darker zones here and having some darker flowers here I think gives it some nice balance. Um, so I do like that as well. Um, you'll notice too, like there's some little dots and ideas of little flowers happening back here. So that's to give the impression of it being a bit further away that you can't really see the details on that as much. So you may want to incorporate that as well. Uh, but for the time being, let's let's do it. Let's get some flowers going. I think I'm going to use my medium brush. And I'm going to use my beautiful red. And we're going to play. So these i don't know what flowers they are if someone does know feel free to let me know um but they kind of do like a point and kind of like that so they kind of look like So to start, I'm just going to give a nice base. I definitely want to put some more color into here. Like I might need to put in a bit of like a 
orange or some white or something happening. Also, you'll notice this my red is very thin. And so against the green, it the green comes right through my red, which is not ideal. And then when it's fully green in the background, so that's changing the way this is going to look, and that's not ideal. But we can still make it work by doing a few things. So I'm just going to still plot in a few more of these. And then we'll add some more color or do something else with it. right with white and put in some lines in these which I might then go over my white with some red after but I want to start getting some different values happening here so I'm just getting white and I'm going over my red flowers doing the same kind of thing I just did and my red flowers are kind of becoming pink, but I'm probably going to go over them again once they dry a bit. Now, I'm doing this because my white is a lot stronger in pigment, so it's going to give me a better base. The red is clearly very thin, so it's looking different, whether it's on the sand or whether it's on the grass, and I don't like that. So. They're becoming pink flowers momentarily, but once this dries, and if I want them to go back to being more red, then I can always put red back on top, and then that will pop more because the white is going to give it the room for it to stand out loud and bright. Or I might decide that I like them to pink and set. We're not sure yet. Not too sure. I do like that they're more opaque right off the hop. I do think I still would prefer for them to be red. here. There's another one here. It's kind of fell off the canvas a bit. Works out. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. do its thing. Okay, and these have some stems. So 
I'm just going to pop some of these in. <laughs> Fantastic. After your pina colada, that's great. I love it. Your back door is open and you forgot that these are my words. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, okay. So I definitely want these to be brighter red. The ironic thing is, is this red that I'm using is called bright red. <laughs> it's bright, but it's not very powerful. Okay, so now it's going to stand out better because I'm going to put it right on top of this white pink that we did. And the red will pop much nicer. That's a little better. Dun, 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 dun. This color, the red is definitely nicer, but boy oh boy is this red not thick at all. Wow. Even when I'm doing this layer, I like, so weak. But as you saw, when you put it on top of white, it the white helps give it some power which is absolutely necessary. Now, hmm, I want to put like way more of these flowers in, but I also want to do some more purple too. So, maybe some pink too, I don't know. Hmm. All right, let's do some purple. For the stem of the flower, I used brown mixed with a little bit of green but I'm debating whether I want to go back on top and just make it more green I don't know if I like it that much to be honest okay Oof, messy 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 colors on my hands like it's a messy paint day today my goodness gracious okay I do need more white so I think I'm gonna do what I did I feel like the purple is gonna be similar to the red 
because it was made from the red too. So it's very, very light. Okay, so let's put in a few purple flowers. And these ones give me the vibe of almost like lilacs or something. Like they kind of have like, they kind of like these red ones, but they kind of look a little bit more. So these like long leaves or long petals. They kind of look like a bunch of like little dots, but like lilacs don't just grow like this. So, but I'm going to kind of give it that feeling that they almost are, even though that isn't very logical, but yeah. So I just put purple and then I got a little bit of white and then I'm just mixing the white into the purple. And I'm going to go back and get more purple, and I'm going to put it on top a bit more. Okay, I'm going to do another one maybe over here. It's kind of similar in shape to these red ones, but... Do another one. Where? Oh, I need you back, please. Do one like here. Well, okay. white in there too. Okay, I'm gonna put another one here. I'm just putting like little dots kind of of purple. And then I'm gonna get some white. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of, a little bit of white, but then like kind of mix it as I'm going, like. Let's get more of that purple. Let's put it on top. Okay, I think I need to touch this guy up a bit. Okay, I got more white. Stephanie painting from Kelowna. Awesome. Bit darker and added birds in the sky and one sailboat. I love it. I love that you did that. That's fantastic. You know what? Birds are a great idea. I do think this guy needs some birds. That was a very, 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 very good idea. Okay, so I'm going to add a few stems on these two. I'm going to use some green. I think it does make more sense for it to be green. I wanted it to be a little bit off green. Okay. It's fine like that, I suppose. 
Okay. So I want to go back with my red flowers. I just want to add a little bit of like orange, I guess. Just put a little bit, a few little lines in with like yellow. Interesting. Okay. And then I'm going to get my more detailed, like thin, fine point brush. And I'm going to add a little bit of like dots. And like little ideas that there are some kind of flowers in the background that I can't quite see. Okay, I'm the same thing with purple. I'm going to put like a few little dots with the purple too. One like here, maybe in the background right there. Another one like right here. Whoa! <laughs> There's a lot of paint on that. That was too much paint. Alright. Let's get some over here too. Mm-hmm. 
I was put like little dots of purple and then I was putting like little white dots too. And then I'm gonna get some The brown actually works for this. Okay, so I guess I want to put a little bit of like a highlight on the. I want to fix a little bit of the, the stems of my flowers. I'm not super a fan of them. So I'm just going to green them up a little bit. I'm going to make the brown on it more of like a shadow. So I've got a bit of a line of green. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Okay, and then just add a little bit, make it a little lighter, and then I'm just putting a little bit of a Highlight on some of them there. Okay. And then I think I want to. Which is the one I use this one? My medium brush. I think I still want to go and put a few more like blades more in the foreground instead of having my flower stems right in the way. I don't know, I think I want that. Yeah, I think I like that more. Okay. All right, so I think that is complete. I think so. So definitely there could be, I might want to put some more, put some more details on my flowers, maybe even add some more flowers. But I think for now I feel pretty good about where we've landed with it. Um, and I hope you do too. I hope you've enjoyed this. Oh, thank you so much, Diana. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that was really sweet. Um... So yeah, so I hope everyone has a good, had a good time. My camera's still being funky, so I don't even know if you can actually see me right now even though I'm moving it. So hopefully you can kind of see me. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, session. Again, on Saturday, there'll be three more options that you can vote on. And then next Wednesday, we will paint again. So the one that has the most votes by uh, Tuesday at noon Eastern Standard Time will be the one that we will paint next week. 
and um, if you are interested in doing your own uh, private party and you would like me to host, please reach out and we can plan a fun party together. Um, it's definitely been fun, a few of them that we've had in the last little bit. Um, and uh, besides that, I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you all next Wednesday for another free paint party. Have a great day. Bye everyone.